Welcome to Nibble Pop Stories. Today we are going to hear the story of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Have you read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? In that story, Tom Sawyer was a naughty boy and his friend Huckleberry Finn was even more mischievous. They often got into trouble. One day, they witnessed a murder, revealed the real criminal and found a hidden treasure that made them rich. After that, Widow Douglas adopted Huck and tried to teach him good manners. But Huck missed his free and adventurous life. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is the sequel, focusing on Huck's life. Huck is unhappy, living with Widow Douglas. He feels trapped, especially because Miss Watson, the widow's sister, keeps trying to teach him manners and spelling. She says he needs to change to go to heaven, but Huck doesn't want to go if Miss Watson is there. Feeling stuck, Huck runs away. However, Tom Sawyer convinces him to return by promising they will start a band of robbers. So Huck goes back to the widow's house. One night, Huck accidentally burns a spider in a candle. He thinks it's a bad sign. He stays awake until midnight and hears a soft meow outside his window. It is a signal from Tom. Huck meows back, climbs out the window and meets Tom. Tom and Huck quietly sneak to the end of the garden but are heard by Miss Watson's slave, Jim. Jim asks who is there but when he falls asleep, the boys escape. They meet other boys and row down the river to a hideout in a hill. Tom suggests they start a gang called Tom Sawyer's Gang. Each boy must take an oath and sign with blood. If anyone tells the gang's secrets, they will be killed and maybe their family too. Since Huck has no family, he offers Miss Watson and the boys agree. The gang plans to focus on robbery and murder. They might ransom captives, though Tom isn't sure how. Female captives will be treated politely. Tom is chosen as the leader and Joe Harper is the second captain. Huck returns home at dawn in his muddy clothes. In the morning, Miss Watson scolds Huck for his dirty clothes. The widow Douglas doesn't scold him. Instead, she washes his clothes. Miss Watson prays with Huck and tells him to pray every day and he will get whatever he wants. But Huck has tried praying and knows it doesn't work. If it did, people could easily get what they want. For example, the widow Douglas prays a lot but still hasn't gotten back her stolen silver snuff box. Huck's father, Pap, hasn't been seen for over a year. He is an abusive drunkard. People say he drowned and that his body was found, but the corpse was in the water too long to be properly identified. Huck thinks it was a woman because it floated on its back. He thinks a drowned man always floats face down. Tom tells the gang stories about battles between Arabs and Spaniards from books he has read. Huck does not care much for these stories since he has not read them. He is not even impressed by the story of a genie that grants wishes when one rubs a lamp or a ring. Huck tries rubbing a lamp and a ring himself, but nothing happens. He decides that it was just one of Tom's lies. Three or four months pass and winter arrives. Huck has been attending school and has learned some reading and writing. He can even recite the multiplication table up to 6 times 7 is 35. 35? Well, that's just Huck's way. Who are we to argue? One morning, Huck spills salt at breakfast. 
he tries to throw some over his shoulder to stop bad luck but miss watson stops him this makes huck feel uneasy his worry grows when he sees familiar boot tracks in the snow huck knows his father pap is back he quickly runs to judge thatcher's house judge thatcher is the man who helps with huck's money the 6000 dollars he and tom found in the adventures of tom sawyer the judge put the money in the bank for huck huck is afraid that if pap finds out about the money he will take it and spend it on drinking so huck asks the judge to take all his invested money with the accumulated interest the judge understands and buys huck's fortune for just a token amount of 1 dollar they both sign a contract that night when huck goes to his room he finds pap there just as he expected huck sees his father pap he remembers being afraid of him because of the beatings but this time huck realizes he is no longer scared pap is around 50 with long greasy tangled hair and a sickly white face his clothes are in rags and his broken boot shows his toes he warns huck to stop going to school because no one in their family was educated and huck shouldn't be either he demands money he has heard huck is rich huck says he has none but pap doesn't believe him pap takes the dollar huck has and goes to buy whiskey the next day pap tries to get huck's money from judge thatcher but the judge refuses later judge thatcher and the widow go to court to take huck's custody from pap but the new judge says he won't separate a son from his father pap threatens to beat huck if he doesn't give him more money huck borrows 3 dollars from judge thatcher and pap uses it to get drunk pap causes trouble in town while drunk and ends up in jail the new judge tries to reform pap by taking him into his home he gives pap a room but soon pap craves alcohol again he sneaks out trades his coat for whiskey and sneaks back in the next morning pap gets drunk again falls breaks his arm and nearly freezes to death the judge realizes pap will never change and gives up hope of reforming him pap continues to bother judge thatcher for huck's money and harasses huck for going to school huck keeps attending school just to defy him pap takes the judge to court to get the money huck occasionally borrows small amounts of money from judge thatcher to give to pap so he can avoid a beating pap uses the money to get drunk causes trouble in town and ends up in jail pap also hangs around the widow's house when the widow warns him to stop pap kidnaps huck and takes him to a secluded cabin in the woods by the river they live there and pap locks huck in when he goes to town for whiskey Huck grows used to this life, enjoying the freedom of fishing and smoking. Pap's drinking and violence get worse. Once he leaves Huck locked in the cabin for 3 days, Huck, fearing he may never escape if Pap drowns, looks for a way out. He finds an old saw to cut his way free. Before he finishes, Pap returns, drunk and angry. He complains about the slow court case and fears losing Huck. That night, Pap becomes violent and threatens to kill Huck. When Pap falls asleep, Huck plans his escape. However, Pap wakes up from a nightmare, chases Huck with a knife, and Huck defends himself. Once Pap goes back to sleep, Huck takes his father's gun and points it at him as he waits for him to wake up. While waiting, Huck falls asleep. When Pap wakes up, he sees Huck sleeping with his gun. He wakes him and asks what he is doing with it. Huck lies, saying someone tried to break in and he was waiting for the intruder. Later, 
Huck goes to the river bank and finds a canoe. He hides it, planning to use it to escape. When Pap leaves for the night, Huck loads the canoe with bacon, whiskey, coffee, sugar, and other supplies. He fakes his death by smashing the cabin door with an axe and spreading the blood of a pig he killed along with some of his own hair. He drags a sack of rocks to the river bank to make it look like his body was dumped in the river. Then he escapes in the canoe. Huck floats down the river and eventually reaches Jackson's Island. Huck wakes up late. He hears a loud boom from the river and sees smoke from a cannon. A ferry boat is full of people searching for Huck's body. They are firing the cannon to make it rise to the surface. As the ferry boat gets closer, Huck hides behind a log. He sees people he knows like Pap, Judge Thatcher and Tom Sawyer. They talk about finding Huck's body along the shore, but when they can't, the boat leaves. Huck spends the next few days exploring the island. One day he finds the ashes of a campfire. That night he decides to find out who else is on the island. He eventually discovers Jim, Miss Watson's slave. Jim thinks Huck is a ghost, but Huck convinces him he is alive. Jim ran away because Miss Watson planned to sell him for $800. Huck is happy to have Jim and they plan to survive together on the island. Huck and Jim explore the island and find a steep hill with a big cave near the top. They decide to hide their supplies in the cave and hide in the canoe in the willows. One day, they find part of a raft and take it with them. Another time, they see a frame house floating down the river with a dead man inside. Jim covers the man's body and they take supplies from the house like candles, a lantern, knives, clothes, bedding and other useful things. They find eight dollars hidden in a coat. Later, Huck plays a trick on Jim by putting a dead rattlesnake on his blanket. The snake's mate bites Jim. Jim gets very sick. But after a few days, he gets better. As time passes, the river calms down. Huck and Jim go fishing and catch a huge catfish. The next day, Huck feels bored and decides to go to town. Jim suggests Huck dress up as a girl using clothes they found in the house. Huck goes to town at night. He finds a small house with a woman inside and plans to ask her, for the latest news. He knocks on the door, knowing he must act like a girl. Judith invites Huck into her home. Huck tells her his name is Sarah Williams. Judith shares a lot of gossip. She talks about Huck's supposed mother. At first, people thought Pap killed Huck, but when Jim ran away the same night, many suspected him instead. Later, Pap disappeared too. There is a $300 reward for Jim and a $200 reward for Pap. Judith believes Jim is on Jackson's Island, the very place where Huck and Jim are hiding. She saw smoke coming from the island. Her husband plans to search the island for Jim that night. While they chat, Judith catches Huck's disguise. She realizes he is a boy. She thinks he is a runaway apprentice mistreated by his master. When she asks for his real name, Huck lies again. He says he is George Peters looking for his uncle. Judith gives Huck a snack and sends him off. Huck rushes back to the island. He warns Jim that people will soon search for them there. They quickly pack their things and leave the island on their raft. Huck and Jim float down the river on their raft. At dawn, they tie up the raft on the Illinois side and hide it. They spend the day there. At night, they drift down the river. They pass towns in the dark. They stop in small villages to buy food and sometimes steal fruits and vegetables. Sometimes they hunt birds. 
On the fifth night, a big storm comes with thunder and lightning. Heavy rain pours down. They take shelter in a small shack and let the raft drift. In flashes of lightning, they see a wrecked steamboat ahead. They sneak aboard it. They see two men threatening to kill another man. Later, the two men leave the third man tied up to die when the boat sinks. Huck wants to find the men's boat and set it adrift so that they can't escape. Jim tells Huck that their own raft has broken loose and is gone. Huck is terrified and almost faints. They are stuck with dangerous men on a sinking boat. They need to find the men's boat to escape. Huck and Jim find the boat, cut the rope and silently float away. They also find their own raft and recover it. Huck sees the wreck and feels sorry for the men, thinking they might drown. Later, they spot a ferry boat and ask the watchman for help. Huck makes up a story about his family being trapped on the wreck and asks the watchman to rescue them. After the watchman prepares to help, Huck and Jim leave. They hide their raft on an island, sink the men's boat and go to sleep. Huck and Jim go through the stolen goods from the wreck and find useful things like boots, blankets, clothes, books and cigars. Huck reads to Jim about kings, but Jim doesn't understand why kings don't do any work. Jim even criticizes King Solomon for wanting to cut a baby in half. Huck then tells Jim about the French king and how people in France speak a different language. Jim thinks it's silly that French people talk differently from Americans. Huck and Jim are three nights away from reaching Cairo. They plan to take a steamboat up the Ohio River to the free states where Jim will be safe from slavery. One night a thick fog rolls in. The strong current pulls the raft away, separating Huck in the canoe from Jim on the raft. Huck hears Jim calling out, but the fog makes it hard to find him. Huck gets lost in the fog. Later, when the fog clears, Huck sees the raft in the distance. He paddles over and finds Jim asleep. Jim is overjoyed to see Huck, as he thought Huck had drowned. Huck and Jim plan to follow the Ohio River at Cairo to reach the free states where Jim will be safe. Jim is already thinking about how to free his wife and children. Meanwhile, Huck feels guilty for helping Jim escape because he thinks it's like stealing Miss Watson's property. He feels very conflicted and struggles with his conscience. Later, Huck sees two armed men in a small boat. They are looking for runaway slaves. Huck lies, telling them the man on his raft is his sick father along with others who have smallpox. The men don't want to get close and leave. Later, a steamboat crashes into the raft, throwing Huck and Jim into the water and separating them again. Huck makes it to shore, but he is surrounded by dogs from a nearby house. The people in the house ask Huck who he is. He says his name is George Jackson and that he fell off a steamboat. A man lets him inside where Huck sees three men with guns and a woman. They give him dry clothes and food. Huck meets a boy named Buck who is about his age and they quickly become friends. The family is called the Granger Fords and they live in a big house. They tell Huck he can stay as long as he wants. Colonel Granger Ford is a real gentleman. His family has two sons, Bob and Tom, and two daughters, Charlotte and Sophia. Charlotte is tall and proud, while Sophia is kind and sweet. The Granger Fords have a long feud with another rich family, the Shepherd Sons. Buck explains that the feud has been going on for a long time, and many people have died but no one remembers why it started. One day Sophia asks Huck to secretly get a note from the church. 
The note contains the time for her secret meeting with Harney Shefferson, who she wants to marry. The next morning, Huck finds out that Miss Sophia has run away with Harney. After this, the Grangerfords and Shefferson's start fighting and many people die, including Buck. Huck is very sad and decides to leave. He finds Jim, who has been hiding and fixing their raft, and together they escape down the river. Two or three days pass quietly as they travel down the river. They sail at night and hide during the day. Sometimes they see falling stars and Jim says they are spoiled stars thrown out of the nest. One morning, Huck meets two men being chased by dogs and helps them hide on the raft. These men act strangely. One says he is a duke and the other says he is the lost king of France. Huck doesn't believe them, but he and Jim pretend to go along with their lies to avoid trouble. They ask Huck lots of questions, wondering why they hide the raft during the day and if Jim is a runaway slave. Huck explains that his family died and he, his father and Jim were travelling south to New Orleans. After a steamboat accident, only Huck and Jim survived. He says they hide during the day because people keep trying to take Jim, thinking he is a runaway. The Duke and the King have both made money in dishonest ways. But the Duke especially likes acting. He suggests that when they reach a bigger town, they should rent a hall and perform scenes from Shakespeare. In the next small town, the Duke prints a notice offering a $200 reward for Jim. So if they get stopped, they can pretend they caught Jim and are taking him in for the reward. The next morning, they reach a small town in Arkansas. The Duke and the King rehearse the scenes from Shakespeare, the balcony scene from Romeo Juliet, sword fighting from Richard III and Hamlet's soliloquy. The Duke prints up flashy posters and hires the courthouse for their performance. Huck goes to the circus. He sneaks in without paying and finds the whole show amazing. That night, the Duke and King perform their play, but only a small crowd shows up and they laugh at the performance. The Duke gets angry and decides the people want something less serious. The next morning, he makes new posters for a new show with the note, Ladies and Children Not Admitted. He hopes it will attract a bigger audience. The next day, the place is full of men. When the curtain goes up, the king comes out naked and covered in paint, dancing. The audience laughs, but the show is so short, they feel tricked. On the second night, an even bigger crowd shows up. But on the third night, the audience brings rotten eggs, vegetables and dead cats to throw at the performers. The king and duke escape to their raft and sail away before the crowd can attack. Jim wonders if all kings and dukes act like this. The next day, the king and duke pretend to be wealthy travellers. They meet a young man heading to New Orleans and give him a ride to the steamboat. During their conversation, the young man tells them that a local man named Peter Wilkes has just died, leaving behind money and property. Peter's brothers, Harvey and William, were supposed to visit but hadn't arrived yet. The king decides to pretend to be Harvey Wilkes to claim the inheritance. The duke pretends to be William, who is deaf and mute. Huck goes along with them as their servant. They dress up and take a steamboat to the village. Once there, they fake their grief and convince the townspeople they are Peter's long-lost brothers. Mary Jane, Peter's oldest niece, is excited to see her uncles and hugs the king. The crowd is touched by the reunion. The king and duke then notice the coffin and start crying loudly. The king gives a speech while the duke pretends to be the deaf and mute brother using baby-like sounds and hand signs. Later, Mary Jane shows a letter from her father explaining 
how Peter's wealth will be divided. The girls get the house and $3,000 in gold, while Harvey and William are to inherit the tannery land worth $7,000 and another $3,000 in gold hidden in the cellar. The king and duke find the gold, count it in front of everyone, and generously hand it all to the girls. The crowd is deeply moved by their generosity. However, Dr. Robinson, who treated Peter Wilkes, says he doesn't believe the king is Peter's real brother. In spite of his warning, Mary Jane trusts the king and even gives him her $6,000 to invest. Dr. Robinson tells the girls they'll regret this day and leaves. That night, the Duke and King hold a dinner for some townspeople. After the meal, Huck talks with Josephine, the youngest sister. She becomes suspicious and asks him tricky questions about England. Mary Jane steps in to defend Huck. Huck feels guilty for helping the King and Duke deceive the girls and decides to return the stolen money. Later, Huck overhears the King and Duke discussing their plan to run away with the money that night, but they decide to stay longer to sell the rest of the property. They hide the gold in the mattress. After they leave, Huck takes the money and hides it in his small attic room, planning to move it somewhere safer later. He waits until the house is quiet before sneaking out. At night, Huck hides the gold in the dead man's coffin. The next day, during the funeral, Huck worries if the gold is still there or if someone might have found it. After the funeral, the king decides to sell the family's property quickly so he and the duke can leave town with the girls. The king even sells the family's slaves, separating the mother from her children, which makes everyone sad. Soon, the king and duke realize the gold is missing. They question Huck about it, but Huck convinces them that the slaves must have stolen the money before they were sold. One morning, Huck sees Mary Jane packing for her trip to England, but she is crying because the slave family has been split up. Feeling guilty, Huck tells her the truth about the king and the duke being frauds. He asks Mary Jane to stay at Mr. Lothrop's house for a few days. Huck can't reveal the truth right away because it would put Jim in danger, as he is a runaway slave accused of murder. Jim could be sent to prison or worse. Huck needs to help Jim reach the free state before exposing the fraud. He also admits to hiding the stolen money in the coffin. Mary Jane agrees to Huck's plan and leaves quietly. Later, as the auction finishes, a crowd arrives from a steamboat shouting that the real heirs of Peter Wilkes have arrived to claim the inheritance. The people are confused and suspicious. The lawyer asks for handwriting samples which show the king and duke are frauds, but the king keeps lying. The real heir then asks about a tattoo on Peter's chest. The king guesses it's a blue arrow, but the real heir says it's initials. The crowd decides to dig up the body to check. At the graveyard, they open the coffin and find the bag of gold on Peter's chest. In the chaos, Huck runs away. He steals a canoe and escapes back to the raft. Jim is waiting for him and they are happy to be free from the duke and king. But as they celebrate, the king and duke catch up to them in their own boat. When the king and duke get back on the raft, the king accuses Huck of trying to run away. The duke steps in and defends Huck, saying he would have done the same thing. They start arguing about whose fault it is and blame each other for hiding the gold. Later, they get drunk and become friends again. While they are asleep, Huck tells Jim everything that happened. Huck, Jim, the Duke and the King stay on the raft for several days. 
the king and duke start running scams in small villages again but none of them work one day the king goes to a nearby town called pikesville to look for more opportunities when he doesn't come back by noon huck and the duke go to find him they see him drunk and arguing with people in the town huck sees a chance to escape and runs back to the raft but when he gets there jim is gone huck learns that the king sold jim for 40 dollars to a man named silas pelps huck goes to the pelps farm pretending to be someone else to rescue jim he sneaks into the Phelps farm, but the dogs start barking at him. A white woman comes out and Huck realizes she is Sally Phelps, Silas Phelps' wife and Tom Sawyer's aunt. She hugs Huck, thinking he is her nephew Tom. Huck quickly figures out that the Phelps family is expecting Tom to arrive that day, so he pretends to be Tom and says he came by boat. Later, Silas Phelps comes back and Sally introduces Huck as Tom Sawyer. As they talk, Huck hears a steamboat coming down the river and worries the real Tom Sawyer might be on it and ruin his plan. Huck decides to meet Tom before he gets to the farm, so he tells Phelps he is going to get his luggage and heads out. Huck meets Tom Sawyer on the road. Tom is shocked because he thought Huck was dead. Huck explains that he faked his own death and helped Jim escape. Tom is thrilled by the adventure and agrees to help Huck rescue Jim. They make a plan. Huck will return to the Phelps farm with Tom's luggage, pretending to be Tom, while Tom will show up later pretending to be someone else. Huck goes back to the farm. A little while later, Tom arrives and Aunt Sally mistakes him for her nephew Sid. During dinner, they hear that Jim had revealed the king and duke's scam to the townspeople who then chased the two out of town. After dinner, Huck and Tom go to the town. On the way, they see a crowd dragging the king and duke who are covered in tar and feathers. Even though the king and duke caused a lot of trouble, Huck feels sorry for them and thinks about how cruel people can be to each other. Huck and Tom wonder where Jim is. Tom thinks Jim is in a small hut because they saw a man, Nat, bring food there earlier. Tom figures Jim must be locked up in the hut. Huck suggests a simple plan to steal the key, get Jim on the raft and float down the river at night. But Tom wants a more exciting plan. They find a shed next to the hut and decide to dig Jim out. The next morning, they go to the slave cabins to befriend Nat. Tom tricks him into letting them visit Jim. When they see Jim, Tom whispers that they will dig him out and set him free. Jim is very happy. Tom and Huck leave, planning to come back at night to start the rescue. Tom thinks their plan is too simple. There is no watchman to drug and there isn't even a guard dog. Tom wishes Jim were chained down more securely. He believes they need to make the escape more difficult because he wants it to be as grand as the ones he reads about in romantic books. Tom insists they should use a rope ladder and a knife to dig Jim out. He says no prisoner ever uses shovels to dig. Huck thinks these ideas are silly but agrees to help. They gather tools and get ready to carry out their escape plan. At night, Tom and Huck start digging their tunnel. They stop using the knives when their hands get covered in blisters. Tom decides to use picks and shovels but calls them knives instead. They manage to dig into the hut and Jim is very happy to see them and wants to escape right away. However, Tom wants to trick Nat first. He plans to have Nat bring Jim a rope ladder that he'll hide in a pie. One night, dogs get into Jim's hut. When Nat sees dogs, he almost faints, thinking witches are causing trouble. Tom tells Nat that he should make a witch pie to please the witches. 
Nat says he doesn't know how to make one, so Tom offers to bake the pie for him as long as Nat promises not to look at what Tom puts in it. Tom and Huck cook the pie in the woods, trying to hide the rope ladder inside. After several tries, they finally make it. Nat brings the pie to Jim and Jim hides the rope ladder in his mattress. Tom insists that Jim must write messages before he leaves. They use a grindstone they found at the mill for this purpose. Tom asks Jim if he can bring some spiders, rats and snakes into his hut so that Jim can befriend them like prisoners do in the books. Jim begs Tom not to do that. Tom is upset because he thinks Jim is wasting a chance to become the most famous prisoner ever. Tom keeps working on his detailed plan to rescue Jim. He fills the hut with rats, snakes and spiders, making it very uncomfortable for Jim. Finally, Tom writes a series of anonymous letters to Silas Phelps to warn him about the rescue. He includes drawings of a skull and crossbones and a coffin drawn in blood. As they get ready to escape, they hear men coming to the door. There are 15 farmers, each with a gun. They quickly hide just in time. After the men go inside, they sneak out and make it to the river. They hop into Huck's canoe and paddle toward the middle of the river, heading for the raft. Jim is happy to be free again. But then the farmers start shooting at them and Tom gets shot in the leg. They bandage his leg, but Jim insists they need a doctor. Huck decides to go to the village to find one while Jim hides in the woods. Huck gets a doctor and tells him that Tom is his brother. He explains that while they were hunting, Tom had a bad dream, kicked his gun and accidentally shot himself. The doctor takes a canoe to the raft where Tom is, but the canoe can only hold one person, so Huck has to stay behind. That night, Huck sleeps in a pile of lumber. When he wakes up, he runs into Uncle Silas, who takes him home. At the Phelps house, the living room is full of farmers and their wives talking about Jim's escape. They believe Jim must be crazy because of the strange things he collected. When night comes, Aunt Sally puts Huck to bed, but keeps worrying and waiting for Tom, whom she thinks is Sid. The next morning, Tom and Jim get caught. Tom is brought in on a mattress with the doctor and Jim is brought in with his hands tied. Aunt Sally is very relieved to see Tom. Some men in the mob want to hang Jim, but others say that Jim's owner could demand compensation if they hang him. So they decide not to hang Jim. Instead, they take him back to the cabin again and chain him up. But the doctor tells the men to be kind to Jim because he helped treat Tom and risked his freedom to do it. The men agree not to hurt Jim anymore. As Tom starts to recover, he happily tells Aunt Sally how he and Huck helped Jim escape. But when he learns that Jim is back in chains, he gets upset. He insists that Jim is as free as anyone else. Tom also reveals that he knew Miss Watson had freed Jim two months ago in her will. While Tom is talking, Aunt Polly, his guardian, walks in. She tells the Phelpses who Tom and Huck really are and confirms that Miss Watson had indeed set Jim free two months ago. As Jim is free and Tom is getting better, Tom gives Jim $40 as a gift. Huck asks Tom what he plans to do next. Tom suggests they all go on adventures together. Huck agrees but worries about not having enough money. Tom reminds him that his money is safe with Judge Thatcher and that his father hasn't come back to take it. Jim then reveals that the dead man they found in the floating house was Huck's father, Pap. That's why Jim covered the body quickly so Huck wouldn't know. Huck can get his money whenever he wants. When Tom is fully recovered, he wears the bullet round his neck. Huck feels relieved that there is nothing more to write about, realizing how hard it is to write a book. 
He thinks about travelling again since Aunt Sally wants to adopt him and civilize him. Oh no, the idea of being civilized never held much appeal for Huckleberry Finn. So, do the adventures end here? The book does, but the adventure perhaps continues. How did you find this story? Do let us know in the comment section. And if you are liking this podcast series, subscribe to our channel Nibble Bob. So, till I find you again with some new story, this is Monami Mukherjee signing off. Good night.